Welcome to worship this morning on this sixth Sunday of Easter. This is Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Great Falls, Montana. I'm Pastor Anna Merritt, and I want to say thank you for participating in this way with worship. May, you're, may you be filled with the joy and the love of, of God through this. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
with you all. And also with you. Persons 
were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
painting, he received his money from the owner and he left. Well, the next day, the owner of the boat came back to the painter and gave him this check that was worth way more than what the cost of the painting was. And the painter was surprised and said, you know, you already paid me for painting the boat. And the owner of the boat said, this isn't for the paint job. It's for repairing the hull in the boat. And the painter said, but you know, it was really small service that I did. It really isn't worth you paying me so much money. And the owner of the boat said, but you don't know. Let me tell you what happened. And so I was not home when you finished, or rather when my children decided that they wanted to take the dry boat and go fishing. And so when I came back home and I realized that my kids were out fishing in a boat that I remembered had a hole in it, I was worried because I didn't know that you had fixed the hole. And so when I saw the kids coming back from their fishing trip, I was overjoyed and I ran to the boat and I noticed that you had taken the extra step and fixed the hole. And really, you could have saved my kid's life. Well, I believe that there are several ways that we can hear that story. That we can hear it that the painter was just a good man and that he was trying to show pride in his work. Or we can hear it that the painter was a man who wanted to go the extra mile, hoping that the owner of the boat would notice and maybe do exactly what he did, come back and give him some more money, or perhaps give him a good reference. But I think, that this is an example of what Jesus is talking about with his disciples about love. That this story is about what can happen when one knows that they are loved by God. That in turn, the love that God has for them helps them to love others helps them to keep their commandment to love their neighbor, which can mean going the extra mile for someone, whether it's recognized or not. It was said to me this week, loving can be a hard thing to know how to do. Because loving can mean different things to different people. And loving can look differently and even feel differently to some than others. And yet, here's the best part, I think. We don't love in response or we don't love others in order to get God's love. But we love others in response to God loving us, and we don't do it without help. That advocate, that counselor, that helper that Jesus talks about, even a defendant, has come to us. We know this as the Holy Spirit, and we'll hear more about the Holy Spirit in a couple of weeks when we celebrate Pentecost. But today, we hear Jesus is speaking last words of instruction to his disciples, and he's trying to comfort them by letting them know that he will not leave them alone. And that even though they will no longer see him, they'll know his presence because of the advocate. And in that way, Jesus will be in them, and they will be in him, and they will be loved forever. And his 
message is for us too. The body, the church that has grown out of those first disciples, even while we're apart physically, is held together by God and the love that God has for us. And we are responding in love for others because of that love that God has for us. And out of that, we're repairing holes in boats of others that we may not even be aware of. And God's love spreads and grows.
come near to us when we are lost, lonely, sick, or hurting, and hear our cries. We pray for all who suffer in any way, especially those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, and your kingdom has no end. We give thanks for the witness of the saints gone before us, and that you, not, you unite us forever in your victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we pray for all, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, 